What's up guys, Paramoto here. How are you guys doing today? Today I am doing fantastic. So guys, the next couple of vlogs I think are gonna be kind of like life updates. There's been a crap load of things going on in my life since the last time we spoke to each other. Believe it or not, since I missed a couple of weeks because of uh, vacation and pre-recording and cameras breaking, it's been a long time since we've actually talked to each other and had a vlog Thursday. It's been certain times in my life, only a handful of times, where I literally feel overwhelmed with how annoyed I'm getting about everything and like right now is, is one of those times. Like, I'm not the most annoyed I've ever been in life, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there really quick. I made a video about this. I ended up deleting it because things ended up, you know, changing. But, you know, I uh, went on vacation last month and I ended up getting exposed to coronavirus during my vacation. And it's like, you know, at the end of the day, I don't really blame the person for bringing it. Uh, and the reason why is that she came on vacation. She's a family member that we're around all the time anyway. And uh, to be honest with you, she came on vacation with us with a small dry cough and things progressed to basically all of the classic coronavirus symptoms. And this vacation is something that we plan a year ahead. I love this property. Plan a year ahead, we pay ahead, and we look forward to it for the entire year. So I'll be honest with you, if I had a simple dry cough, I don't think I would have, you know, canceled a, a, a vacation that I've been planning for a year. You know, like there's this guy that was like really wise back a couple thousand years ago. I, you know, forget his name, but he always said, you know, those without sin cast the first stone. And I'm really trying to reserve my judgment for her. A lot of people are trying to put the blame on her and she's trying to put the blame on somebody else as well. But at the same point, it's just like, you know, crap happens and you just gotta move on with your life. You can't just dwell on it. So, you know, I don't blame her. I have no hard feelings for her exposing me to the coronavirus, but things have kind of developed since then to become hyper annoying. As of right now, I've already done my quarantine and I tested a negative. So I'm good. I've, I followed everything that I was supposed to do, 100%. judgment for somebody else to be honest with you so guys thank you for taking a short break from your vlog Thursday I want to announce that tomorrow viewer video Friday is back on we're gonna start viewer video Friday tomorrow with a suggestion by life 40 so make sure that you tune in tomorrow Friday at noon anyway guys back to your video what I want to talk about is the aftermath so Basically, she got her husband sick, and then they exposed us for an entire week. An entire week, we shared a house with somebody that had an active case of COVID-19. Me and my girlfriend did not get sick, and we didn't test. Uh, we didn't test positive, so we weren't exposed to it during the entire week that we spent with the coronavirus patient. The original patient ended up giving it to her husband, who then gave it to my girlfriend's mom, who's at our house right now. So it's like, ugh. Uh, we've already talked to like our occupational health uh, people and they basically said like it doesn't count as an additional exposure since we were exposed at the same time she just has a weaker immune system than we do because she's like 60 with pre-existing conditions but this lady oh my god she is annoying the ever loving you know what i'm gonna cuss right now i'm gonna cuss right now because you know what this is a cuss worthy situation she is annoying the ever loving shit out of me with how she is like literally just you know, she'll be on the phone talking to like all her sisters like, yeah, I got the coronavirus and blah, blah, blah. Trying to like drum up like sympathy and stuff. But then she doesn't distance herself at all. And she's like downstairs touching everything. So I basically, anytime I need something from downstairs, like kitchen, bathroom and stuff like that, I literally have to decon everything. And like, she's still there. And I've been literally giving her shit every single second of the day. Like you have an active case of COVID-19, you have symptoms, FO, get out of here. And then like she's like sitting there saying that she doesn't have any symptoms and stuff but then she's like oh yeah i'm short of breath like oh great that means you're like actively still you know contagious great you have symptoms awesome so i get to like hang out in this like hazmat zone of a house now you know it's bs total bs if you couldn't tell she's annoying the absolute living crap out of me um i still feel fine again so i mean honestly i don't think it's a huge deal i'm pretty sure her quarantine's over as well so i'm pretty sure she's good too but man it's just a super annoying situation buckle up because this is probably gonna have to be a two-part vlog about all the crap happening in my life but i get a text message from my girlfriend last night like hey can you pick up my mom some tea from the grocery store like she is literally a grown adult that cannot take care of herself like you were 
how have you not gotten picked off by predators at this point? How has a cheetah not come up and gobbled you up because of how useless you are as a person, to be honest with you? Like, I told my girlfriend, like, I don't remember getting a subpoena for that court case where I took custody of this worthless adult. She is not a ward of me. I am not her legal guardian. She's a grown adult. I don't know why I just seem to always be on the hook to take care of this grown-ass adult. I understand that she's older, but she should be a functioning adult. Like, 60 years old is not old and decrepit, you know? Like, seriously. But I'm getting super annoyed with it. I just can't do it anymore. That and the fact of the matter is, like, everything around me is, like, breaking, and I have, like, no money because I have had to, like, replace, like, everything that I own over the last month, like, including this GoPro, which I'm actually kind of happy about upgrading, but... You know, I'm just waiting for the next thing to go wrong. I know everybody's probably had those periods where it seems like everything is going wrong, but I mean, I am hardcore in a period where every single thing is going wrong. I'm kind of waiting for like, since this bike is, I need to make a video about this, but since this bike is like paid off now, I'm waiting for it to like blow up or like somebody to smack into it in a parking lot without insurance or something like I'm, that's, that's the level of crap that I've been dealing with with uh you know my life is that something like that like truly would not surprise me since i am negative of the coronavirus and i've done my quarantine and so is everybody in my household i'm gonna go to the gym real quick all right guys back at it had a great workout, feeling a little bit more positive since. So let's get back to it. This person at the gym working the desk was like, oh, what kind of bike you have? And I'm like, oh, Ducati Panigale. She's like, oh, what's, what, what's that? She had no idea. Showed her a picture, she's like, that's super clean. I'm gonna go roll past real quick, give it a little rib bum. All right, so workout in. I've missed some workouts this week, so what I'm doing, instead of just like giving up and being like, well, I missed it, so I'm done. You know, I've, I've actually been double teaming the workouts lately. So today I ran three miles and I just did a leg workout and oh man, am I worn out right now. But you know what, it was hella good. It's good to get back in a schedule and a routine. That's one thing about being in like a quarantine situation and stuff that I'm out of now. You know, like it ruins your normal routine. I'm just like, to be honest with you, I'm a worker. You know, I've been working full time since I was 17 and being out of work is just, you know, even though I'm getting paid, it's just kind of, it's not a good feeling for me. It kind of brings up a lot of anxiety and it, it wrecks me off my normal everyday schedule. So I don't feel quite right. I feel bad letting down my team at work and it's just like, man, you know, I know this thing kind of happens and it's just out of your control. You know, the best thing you do is just kind of take care of yourself so you can take care of the people around you and it's just it's still just it's hard it's still hard you know i'm just glad i was negative and then i spent two weeks at home and i didn't give it to anybody that's the most important thing the most important thing 100 percent is that i didn't give it to anybody man was it hard you know dialing up my jujitsu gym and like dialing up the people at jujitsu and be like hey bro like i'm sorry oh man i got exposed to the rona you know you might want to sit out a little bit you know and it was just that was really hard to be able to have to do and it's just man i just i never want to be in that situation again so i'm actually taking an additional week off of jujitsu just because we're like this close to each other so i just figured it would be a good idea just to, to take another week off i would appreciate that if i was one of my partners they can roll by themselves and i'll be back in it you know okay so i think there's only one worse muscle group besides for legs to do and then jump on a motorcycle and that would be like shoulders or chest you know like right now my legs are killing me and being scrunched up super scrunched up right now they're gonna start cramping soon but i got a couple more stops that i need to make and i want to talk to you guys because i really do miss talking to you guys sometimes it's really hard to maintain a positive attitude guys like i'm i'm really trying here but like this last month and i'm gonna i'll get into it more on like the next vlog this will be like a two-part life update vlog but man, this month has been hard. It has been a hard, hard, hard month. You know, I remember one month harder than this, and that was when I moved 600 miles away from home to move down to Raleigh in the first place. And I, I tell you what, there is one point where I was literally just like, man, if one more thing happens, I'm literally walking in the woods and nobody will ever see me again. I'll just be a woods person. Sounds good. It's loud. Made a lot of noise, didn't go anywhere though.
It's quicker. That's a quicker bike, I'll tell you that much. And he's not going slow as dog shit, so hey, go Harley guy. <laughs> Good for you. So I got really salty the other day about a moto vlogger, and like I kind of like, oh man, I kind of like am embarrassed of myself and ashamed a little bit for getting so salty about another moto vlogger's success. But like, so this moto vlogger, she does good videos and she has good content. And I'm really glad that there's. I'm really glad that there's a female moto vlogger out there for this particular niche so like other females can look up to her and, and know that like moto vlogging is an inclusive you know game for everybody you know good for her but she like just got 50,000 subs and it's like I was just I couldn't help just be like you're not doing anything that a guy hasn't done like a million times in a row like the only reason why you have 50,000 subs is because you're a girl oh man if I was a girl I would play that crap up to be totally honest with you I really would and like so I don't really blame her and I, I feel like I should be excited for proud for you know just kind of you know positive about it but at the same at the same time I'm just not like I'm just having a hard time being positive about it I've long said that like motor vlogging there's so many fish in the sea like and there's like billions of viewers out there of YouTube we're not really fighting for viewers so I don't know why I feel so jealous but it's just like man if I only had a pair of tits you imagine like a a chick on a Ducati Panigale, I mean, there wouldn't even be an argument. It would be like one of the most popular channels on the internet, like seriously, you know? And this girl's like, she's on a Harley Davidson and she goes like solo camping and did a solo ride. And it's like, wow, you did something that like everybody with the motorcycle has done. Like why, why is it such a huge thing? I don't know, I don't get it. I don't, and I'm just embarrassed that I'm so jealous about it. Like. I know success is relative and from what we did and what we started off as, I feel successful. I feel like we've already kind of checked all the boxes that I wanted to check when I started motor vlogging between making a positive community, sharing life together, and just enjoying the ride. But at the same point, like, I don't know, like somebody else has more success than me and it's like, I don't know, it makes me want to work harder. That's I guess the, the positive takeaway from that. It makes me want to work harder. There was so many murders in the house. I don't know if I could live there. I don't know. I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to be more positive. I feel like getting out of this super negative mindset that I have right now, after getting out of this super negative month is gonna happen. It's hard. It's hard to turn around a negative attitude. I'm gonna go get some protein for after my workout. Some protein. I'm gonna take this last shady spot right here. I really wish I lived in an area where I never had to own a car again. That's that's the takeaway from having a blast riding around a superbike everywhere. I wish I didn't have to have a car. Because if I didn't have to have a car, that would free up. I mean, like, my car is paid off and everything. Basically, all my vehicles paid off besides for the brand new bike. But, like, that would mean that I would have, like, $60 less a month in insurance to pay for. I'd have less, you know, you know, money in my savings that would go to that in case it breaks and whatnot. And I can just focus all my, my time and energy on motorcycles. But I wish that was a thing. I'll be right back with you guys. All right, guys, back at you. <laughs> All right. Let's end this vlog on a positive note. How about that? There's been enough negativity on today's vlog. And I'm sorry, there's going to be negativity on, some, on next week's vlog as well. I'm sorry. But let's end this one positive. So, so I was uh, checking my Instagram the other day and I found out that the, the guy that literally inspired me to be a motorcyclist and be a motor vlogger started following my Instagram page. I had like a celebrity moment, like I really hope one day I get to meet him, like maybe when I ride across the country, but it, it would be amazing, it would just be amazing to meet like the the person that really inspired me to start all this but it was so cool it was so cool seeing him you know like you know his name and started following you i'm like oh dude like that's so cool the last time i felt that proud was when i'm down 83 liked one of my pictures on instagram one day and it was just like that's so cool guys like he's like an og of ogs
But anyway, guys, I think I want to end this vlog with a little bit of my favorite band ever, and that's Iron Sheik. So I'm going to see you guys on the next video. I'm going to try to be positive in light of all the darkness around me. But as of right now, we are going to just end it with some epic punk rock music. Enjoy.